achieved. Hey, 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 welcome to Studio de Every Day Quarantine, where we're going to talk about our cowboy topics of the day. So I accidentally came up with a thing yesterday. I didn't even mean to. I feel like it's a, it's almost like a, it's a Mike Fisherism where he like, he comes up with catchphrases for like everything. And I accidentally came up with it yesterday, but I do believe this is the Cowboys biggest problem on planet earth right now. And the Cowboys biggest problem is a, my guy problem. That's the problem. And it starts, obviously, where everything starts, right? Very, very top. At the very, very top, when the Cowboys finally let go of Jason Garrett, probably, I don't know, seven, six, five, four, three, however many years too late, they finally let Jason Garrett go. And when they hired Mike McCarthy, they hired Mike McCarthy because that was Jerry's guy, right? Hung out with him, interviewed him, liked him. All right, my guy, we'll take him. We don't need to do a real coaching search. We don't need to interview anybody. We'll do one fake interview over here. We'll interview McCarthy. Bam, got my guy. There's my guy. So Mike McCarthy becomes the head coach. Whether he's qualified or not. I love Pat McAfee's theory that he literally did nothing in the years that he'd been fired. He just got Tom Pelissero to come over. I was like, hey, record me and pretend I've been working real hard. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Uh, so now you have Jerry's guy. He's a head coach. So now you have your head coach. It's time for your head coach to hire his um, defensive coordinator. And man, Mike Nolan back in the day, he hired me. So that's my guy. So I'm going to bring in my guy. So Mike McCarthy brought in his guy. Forget about trying to find the best defensive coordinator. Forget about trying to have as good a coach as you can get. You just bring in your guy. Bones Fossil, bring in your guy. Done. And then John Fossil, this one becomes relevant just because of how one football game played out, but still it's relevant. Do you guys remember last year when the Cowboys needed a kicker? They brought in Kai Forbath and he made every kick. Didn't miss. So that was cool. And then going into the season this year, they had hired Bones Fossil as a special teams coordinator, and he wanted to bring in his guy. So they signed Greg Zerline. And you're getting ready to go to training camp where you can have a little competition, see who makes more field goals, who misses more field goals. Your guy had been perfect last year. But instead of a competition, they just let Forbath go. Because Fossil had my guy. The Cowboys have a my guy problem. The Cowboys do not have a meritocracy at any level of the organization. They have a my guy problem. And until they fix the my guy problem, you're going to have a large hurdle to try to overcome to be one of the best teams in football. That's the way it is. It's a my guy problem. All right, let me bang through your mailbag questions today. Renee De Los Santos, he said, Jeff, do you think the awful Cowboy free agents were a product of Mike Nolan's mismanagement or an error in the front office? P.S. Does Captain Trade Down have a drafting philosophy? In your last live videos, it seemed that El Capitan was drafting for need and not for fit or best player available. Can you please explain? Better yet, do a video with different drafting techniques. That would take a really long time. That would be a long video, but I may do that at some point. Um, Free agency was a bust. In a lot of cases, because they picked up players who weren't good. Um, And it's weird because I kind of liked it. Because Everson Griffin last year, he had good tape. He really did. He was still a really good player. But somewhere between last year and over the offseason, he was not a good player. And maybe COVID, maybe you don't get to see how the guys are physically as easily as you could in a normal offseason. But... Uh, Everson Griffin turned out to be a bad signing. Don Terry Poe was a bad signing. Gerald McCoy, you just never got to have him because he hurt himself. Uh, the secondary guys were bad. They they had an awful offseason in terms of free agency. The draft, you can still hold out a lot of hope for, but free agency was a total bust. So I think that has to fall on the front office. And, you know, Will McClay is basically bulletproof around here. I think he's really good at his job. But when you're responsible for something, you got to own your part of it, and he has no problem doing that. Uh, as far as drafting, I don't mind. No, I, I love picking the best player available, but there are situations where the best player available doesn't make sense for your team. For instance, if you have a quarterback, the best player available is a quarterback, but that quarterback's not better than my quarterback, well, this quarterback's never going to play, so I'm not picking him. Uh, when, if Travis Frederick in his second or third year and the best player available is a center, I'm not picking him because he's not going to play. So there's no point. Um, 
The only exception I would make is if there's a big gap between you're like, our best player available is here, and man, he's our best available player by a mile. That's the kind of guy that you might want to pick because otherwise you're going to look back in two, three, four years and be like, why the hell? We knew that guy was going to be a pro bowler, and we've got this rotational defensive tackle because it was a need, and we could have had that. You don't want to look back with regret. And if your best player available is the best player available by a mile, then I would pick him. Like that's That was C.D. Lamb. I was a huge fan of the C.D. Lamb pick. Wide receiver wasn't a need, but he was clearly the best player available. And so you pick him. That's the right thing to do because if you don't do that, you end up reaching and you end up with Taco Charlton because you wanted to pick a defensive end, and that's dumb. So you want to stick as close as you can to best player available, but you have to be realistic about your team and how much he can t- help you over the next year, two, three, four, five. In the, fir- in the first round especially, it's a five-year contract. You can't think in sixteen a 16-game 16 window, like, oh, I desperately need a guy that can line up and start because most rookies aren't going to line up and start and dominate anyway. You're worried about a five-year window with a first-round pick. So you keep your eyes open for the best player available, and sometimes it's going to make your fan base mad because you're going to say, oh, we need a defense. But Panay Sewell was the best player available, the offensive tackle out of Oregon. So you pick him. I would have no problem with that pick because you're picking the best player, and the best player is going to help your team because you can find a way to get him into the lineup. Matt says, hey, Jeff, if you had the opportunity to be the GM for the offseason, who would you re-sign, sign in free agency, and draft to fix the Cowboys? I have to get a list of free agencies. I think in free agency I would sign some sort of functional defensive tackle. Um, in the secondary, if they're on the cheap, I would keep either Cheeto or Jordan Lewis – and I would consider keeping Xavier Woods. But I wouldn't guarantee them anything, right? They're not guaranteed starting spots. I just, I don't have enough players at safety and corner. So if there's not a big market for a couple of these guys, then you could bring a couple of them back. But it's still got to be a focus in terms of upgrading that in the draft and or free agency, depending how much money they end up having available. Puncho the King. Jeff, please. Where did our Xavier Woods go? I think his decline is almost as much as Jalen's decline. Please talk about it in tomorrow's video. That's part of the reason that I place a lot of blame at the feet of Mike Nolan. Because Xavier Woods has been a quality starting safety for three years. And a lot of the times this year, you're looking at him going, what in the hell is he doing? And then you watch Van Der Esch run the wrong way. You're like, what the hell is he doing? And then you watch Jalen run the wrong way. What the hell is he doing? Then you watch a blown coverage. It's like, what does he do? What was he doing? What was he? The fact that the what was he doing isn't one guy or two guys. It's basically all of them. That makes me blame the teacher. And yes, I acknowledge their talent on defense is not good enough. But I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking that you don't be lost. And they have everybody lost at different times. So I blame their teacher. David, why haven't they played Bradley and I or Reggie Robinson would love to see what those guys can do. It's about to be time. If they can manage to lose to the Bengals, it'll 100% be time. But I don't know with an eye. I'd love to see an eye active and get 10 or 15 snaps a game, maybe 20 snaps a game. Uh, I would love to see Reggie, Ro- Reggie Robinson start him. And maybe they're just waiting. Maybe when the Giants win one more game or Washington wins one more game, they'll finally be willing to take that step where they say, okay, there's no longer a point to wearing out Demarcus Lawrence. There's no longer a point to playing a ton of snaps to Alden Smith, you know, and it's time to see what we got. And a lot of teams will wait till they're mathematically eliminated. So that may be what they're waiting for. And they're pretty close considering Washington's two games ahead of you and beat you twice, so they have a tiebreaker over you. But uh, I guess if it were a three-way tie, they're going to chase the dream as long as they can chase the dream. But I would love to see Bradley and I. I'd love to see Reggie Robinson. I think that's what they should do is get guys like that on the field. Ronald, Jeffrey, what are your thoughts about us picking up some of the cap casualties that are inevitable in Philly? I would love to see Fletcher Cox with a star in his helmet. Come on! Yeah, bring me Fletcher Cox. Let's go. I'll take him. Uh, The Eagles are going to have to trade some guys. Or we got to see what the league is going to do because they're going to have a lot of teams that are over the cap and having to scramble and make moves that are going to hurt their teams just to save minuscule amounts of money to get under the cap. So maybe the league is going to cut them a break in some way. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'd love to see Fletcher Cox as a Dallas Cowboy. But 
if Philadelphia, if that's a guy that Philadelphia decides they have to move on from, I don't think their first uh, idea is going to be to send him to Dallas. I don't think. All right. I appreciate everybody for watching this. Make sure you're listening 2 to 7, 105.3 The Fan, the home of the Cowboys and DFW. Listen to that on the radio.com app. Make sure you're subscribed, youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. You got the notifications turned on. Click the bell. Still trying to get to the 22% club. We're stuck in the 21s. Uh, And leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. And I will see you tomorrow on the daily video. I love you. Bye.